How well does Claude Sonnet 4.5 code? Well, let's do a code test. It was actually released today, and you can see on their blog post, if I scroll down, you can see the software engineering benchmarks. So it is better than Opus 4.1, Sonnet 4, GPT-5 Codex, GPT-5, Gemini 2.5 Pro. And then if we look at this chart here, you can see all the different benchmarks where Claude Sonnet 4.5 is indeed first. So today I've been running the API version. So I took the API key and then I've been using it on existing projects and it works really well. But for this code test, I'm going to do my classic like single prompt, see how well it does. And we can compare it against other models that I've done this with in the past. So if you are unaware, I have the Franklin A website and I'll have a link in the description below. We can come up here, we can go to code test and I have these five different code tests I do with all the different models. So we're going to start off with the simple one, which is Angry Bird. I'm just going to get it going just so you guys can see the code and we can try it. But our prompt is pretty simple. Create a single file, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Angry Bird inspired game. I want to have a menu screen, level selector and 10 levels. So some of the prompts in this video are going to be a lot more detailed. Some are going to be a little bit more open ended. So the model itself can decide, hey, this is what I want to do or in some circumstances, it's going to be us giving it exact instructions. For the sake of these tests, it's whatever the model spits out first is the code for the sake of the test. So if it works, great. If it's broken, well, that's what it is. I don't try to cherry pick any of the results. It is what it is. And we can see here on the right, it is coding. This is the newest version of Claude and I am very excited. I'm just gonna move myself over. I'm very excited to see what it comes up with. I truly do think Claude is probably the best agentic coder. So I was, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I was playing around with it with API keys and it works extremely well. The only thing is it is pricey. So in like an hour, I think I spent like close to $15 in just one hour of usage. But anyway, uh, if you guys are interested in a future video, I can cover how to maximize your Claude usage without spending a massive amount of money if you're using API or if you're using CLI, Claude CLI, then obviously you can save some money that way. So we can just kind of see the code going in the background, I think. This might be one of the longest codes I've seen for our Angry Bird demo. And wow, okay. All right, hold on a second. We're making making a game. So we can hit play. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uncaught error. Uncaught reference error. All right, let's... It said it paused because it reached the maximum length. Okay, hold on a second. So maybe it didn't actually error out. Let's just hit continue and just let it continue coding. So. I'm gonna count this. This doesn't count as a mistake. It's just one message. We just hit the limit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna count it. We're gonna be back when it finishes coding our massive game. All right, so let's try it now. And we have a level selector. So this is looking promising. And here we go. Can we, wow, okay, okay. We have our little pig. Um, so we have levels at the top, birds two, score 300. Hey, we did it. Okay, so this is really good. This is the first model able to do this since Gemini. Is the score a little glitchy? <laughs> you guys be the judge. Let's go to the next level. Um, okay, so we have two pigs there and they're like really in the distance. It's not bad. I truly think the Gemini 2.5 Pro one was better, but this is good to see that it actually does work. Let's go to the next level. And I guess we can go through all the different levels even though we didn't beat the prior level. So there's that. Let's go to the menu. Okay, so we can't select level three, but we can go back to level two and we can see what it looks like. All right. So that was the one thing. Gemini was all beatable. So here's the deal. We're going to take this code here that we got from Claude. We're going to come back to the website. And when we go to Angry Birds, you're going to see here, this is the exact prompt we just gave it. We can see the code for our Claude 4.5 Sonnet model. And you can go through and see this in history now. And you can select any different model. So you can go back and say, okay, what did Gemini 2.5 Pro look like or Perplexity Labs or Grok 4 or ChatGPT 5, so on and so forth. And you can flip and you can see all the code at that point in time. So I kind of keep track of everything. And then we can go to preview and you can see exactly what each model did at any given time. So this was ChatGPT 5, what it did on 8.7.25. We can go back, we can see the Gemini 2.5 Pro model, and you can see what this one looks like, what the level select and all the levels are passable and beatable. So anyway, this is just kind of how we're doing the code test. And you can see Angry Birds, I truly think Claude Sonnet is probably the second best one we've had to date. 
But in terms of graphics, probably the best because it actually looks really nice. So good job, Claude Sonnet, we're off to a strong start. If we come back to all tests, let's go on to Minecraft next. The prompt is a lot more in depth this time around. So we're kind of saying, hey, this is what I want you to do. So let's come back to Claude, let's create a new chat. You're an expert game developer tasked with creating a simplified game inspired by Minecraft. It goes on to talk about the constraints. So there's like a code limit constraint. It tells it the technology it has to use, the simplicity, and then it goes on to say like requirements, block interactions, first person controls, a GUI, and then output of what we want it to have. I have restricted this to a thousand lines of code just to see if it's possible and how it will work. So while this is going, I just wanna show you, we can go to preview and I wanna show you some of the different ones we have. So this is Grok Code Fast 1, and if I remember correctly, this one failed. We can go back to ChatGPT5, and this one was actually pretty good. It wasn't terrible. You can kind of see what we have. We can jump, we can move forwards and backwards. It's not bad. We can go Perplexity Labs, and you can see this one here. So you get the idea. There's a lot of decent ones that exist. Again, I think Gemini 2.5 Pro was just wild. The fact that you can like pop into this world, you can run around, and you can actually like place blocks, you can delete blocks. It was very functional and working. The Claude version is done and we can move with WASD, space with jump and mouse look, left click to break, right click to place, one to five to select a block. And we have a problem. We are kind of stuck at eight frames per second. Now we're down to seven, we're up to eight. So I think the game works but the framework is just like off the map because the number of blocks is 454,000 blocks. So let's fix this. And important to note, I am copying the code here. That's the one that's gonna go on the website. So just basically, can you use less blocks so the frames per second improves and it is playable. So it is going to hopefully fix this. And here we go, it's reduced the number down. So we're doubled the frame rates. Is it more playable now? I know. Reduce it much, much more. 14 frame rates per second is not enough. All right, we went chunk size from 16 to eight. We're now at 120, but our game is no longer playable. All right, listen, we can't move around. It's not really working. Let's move on. All right, so we have Subway Surfers, but with cars. So let's try this one here. Let's try this prompt. We're gonna copy it over, paste, and it is going to start to code this for us. Let's come back. I wanna show you a preview of what we're working with here. So we have Grok. And this is Grok Code Fast 1. You have no idea where you are because it doesn't really show you. ChatGPT 5, you can see we have like our Cloud Drifter running game thingamajig here. It says we got wrecked and there is no road. The buttons are actually inverted, but it's not terrible. It doesn't look great, but you know, this is what ChatGPT 5 made. We have Grok 4, so Epic Car Runner, and it doesn't really play. Uh, Grok seems to really struggle with code. We have Claude 4 Sonnet, so you can see what this looked like. And I have a lot of hope. This one's actually really, really tough. Uh, you can see me go back and forth. Ooh, okay. Um, wow, okay, that was close. All right, so you can see my final score. We have that one. And then we can kind of go down to Gemini 2.5 Pro. You can see what this one looks like. And uh, this one was my arrow keys. And eventually there is things that come in your way here. You can see the red ones. It's not super challenging this one, uh, but it looks pretty good. So, but let's just kind of crash there. And then lastly, we have 2.5 Flash and hopefully your actual game is ready to go. You can see what 2.5 Flash has made. So let's come back to code. We're gonna enter it in there in just a second. And here it is. Hey, Highway Rush 3D, race through traffic. All right, so can we, okay, okay. It looks pretty good. I like the wavy effect, the clouds. Um, I'm going to say this might be the best one. That's just my personal opinion. I just like the effect. I feel like the graphics are probably the best out of all of them. That's not a high bar, but it, it does look decent. Although the last Claude one was a lot more challenging, but for like a single prompt, this is pretty good. All right, on to Sonic. Our prompt is super simple. I like to try like a variety of prompts just to see what it's capable of doing. And I know some people in the comments, I'm just gonna repeat this. I know I say it in a lot of these different videos. Some people are like, hey, you're not prompting it properly. But I think that's the whole idea of a benchmark. If you give it like one standard prompt, it's 
pretty fair across the board across all different models. And the whole concept is, is as the models get smarter, the prompt you put in shouldn't matter as much. At least that's the theory behind it. So I think it's a pretty fair test, but if you guys have something better, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but anyway, we can see our Sonic game generating here. And in the meantime, like we can go to preview. You can see some of the ones that exist. So this is Grok Code Fast. We can see what it made. Again, arrow keys just catches me off guard. ChatGPT 5. This one actually was really cool. Uh, I'll give ChatGPT 5 some credit here. So you can see like me get the little animations of being hit. You can see me going through and collecting all the rings, but there's no real endpoint. Uh, we have Gemini Diffusion, that one just failed. Perplexity Labs, it said, hey, level complete, and that was the end of that. And Claude 4.0 saw it. If I scroll down, you can actually see what it is. Again, it's the arrow key, so it's just kind of like flipped on me. And then spacebar to jump, and you can kind of collect the rings, but nothing really happens if you hit the enemies. And if you get the last ring, again, nothing really happens. That's the end of the game. Um, so you can kind of see what we're working with. Gemini 2.5 Pro, That's this one looks really nice. And if you collect all the rings, it actually says like, hey, congratulations, you did it. But again, the game itself is like super, super simple. And I mean, part of it is the prompt, but you can see the variety level we are getting for this test. So let's come back here and let's see what our newest version of Claude was able to do. So we can move the arrow keys and we can use spacebar to jump. All right, so this one is a lot better already because you can't jump through the ground, okay? Or like through the, the, the floor above us, the floating floor. So we got all of those. Can we continue? Okay, I, I died and there's no way to continue. Hmm. Okay, so it gives us a score, but we can't really game over. All right, so and now we refresh and it is there now. So you can go back and check it out. All right, on to my favorite test of all of them is the GTA test. So we're gonna just copy this. We're gonna get it going because this one might take some time. And then I'll show you what this one is all about. So I want you to create a single file GTA inspired game using threes. So I told it even the library, I want it to be 3D. I want to have the ability to run around, jump in and out of cars that are moving in a downtown city. This should be 3D, trying to make it look as good as possible while using only shapes. So we can actually go to preview. You can also see the code. You can see Grok code fast, what it came up with. You can see ChatGPT 5, it's like three-ish. <laughs> the person looks really cool. It actually looks like a real person. The city looks pretty decent. You can see what we're working with here. The, the, I, from what I remember, you couldn't get into a car on this one and like the button control thing is really like wonky. We can kind of go down. We have Grok 4, just failed. We have Minimax Agent, which was amazing. And again, these are all the same prompts, single single prompts, like one code output. You can see this one actually has like a status, you're on foot, this is how fast you are, here's your position, here's the nearest car, so we're like not near a car. We can enter a car on this one, I think this one was really good. You can kind of start seeing the windows on the buildings, just to give you an idea of what what's possible. Gemini Diffusion was a failure, Perplexity Labs, I, I remember this one being good, but it took me some prompts afterwards to get it to work. The single shot prompt was what you see, and we have Claude 4.0 Sonnet, so this one was a failure. And then we have Gemini 2.5 Pro, and I remember this one, if you like refresh it and you happen to spawn properly onto the floor, it's actually not bad, it's kind of cool. So this is uh, Gemini, and this one's actually like pretty fast. In terms of all of them, I think this is the most responsive, but some of the other ones look nicer. The only glitch with this one is if I jump into a building, I can jump on top of the building. Just, just a minor problem. All right, so let's go back. We have our city sandbox and you can see all the different things and wow, okay, hold on a second. Um, the cars are changing colors, but we can enter E. Can I move my like cursor around? How do I do that? All right, let me just try to enter a car. All right, hold on. So the car allows me to move around. The city looks really cool. I love the, the lines and the windows and everything. I can drive through the building. Apparently I can accelerate, reverse, steer, AD, and then F to exit the car. So I'm out of the car now, but now when I'm on the car, I can only move around. I can't actually like look around. I can't jump and it's called the city driver. So I think in terms of appearance, this is really good. It is really smooth. Uh, this is like same quality smoothness as Gemini, 
but minus the jump and look around, but I think the cars work a lot better and the buildings look a lot nicer. I, I don't know how I feel. I think this one's like right there with Gemini. I think in terms of like coding from what I've seen so far, it is a really good model and probably the best coding model you can use right now. I say that from like a combination of tests, like from this video here and as well as me using the API credits earlier in the day, I think Gemini is like still probably second. And then I put Claude like slightly ahead. And I think where Claude really shines is when you're using Claude CLI. And that's when you're like able to really utilize the agentic coding features. If you have like a massive code base, that's where you're gonna really see the difference between Claude and other models. But in these one shot prompts, and if you're doing like small projects, I think we have like Claude and Gemini kind of like neck and neck. I'm not really impressed with Grok or ChatGPT. I don't know. Those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you think as always. Don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Testing out new cameras, new mics. I don't know how that works out. Let me know what your thoughts are on that as well. And don't forget to like the video. It tells the algorithm, hey, I enjoy this type of content and I want to see more of it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video.